You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to make a pocket analog oscilloscope. Before we begin the video, I have another letter. And so, this letter comes from Devin and Caleb from Cleveland, Ohio. And so they say that my videos have helped them to want to explore the uh, inventions of Nikola Tesla, who I am a huge fan of, by the way, if you can't tell, there and there. That's him from a couple years ago I drew it. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. Anyways, he's also mentioned that he has his own DIY YouTube channel with his friend Caleb. And so, that channel name is called Inventing Things. And so if you guys want to go check that out, I'll have that linked in the description below. And, yeah. Also, he told me to be safe and have a wonderful day, so that's pretty nice. Anyways, thank you so much for sending me this letter. I really love to hear from you guys. And so, let me go ahead and put this up on the letter wall back there. Okay, and now with that done, let's go ahead and move straight on to the video. As I mentioned in last week's video, in today's video we're going to be doing a giveaway because the company is going to give some of you guys pocket oscilloscopes. And so in last week's video, I said for you guys to comment on this video, but a lot of you guys commented on last week's video, so comment on this video. Like this one. Anyways, I'll be showing you guys those pocket oscilloscopes later on in the video, but today we're going to be making our own pocket oscilloscope. In fact, this pocket oscilloscope is really just going to be more of a novelty item, to be honest with you. However, I think it'll be pretty cool. And so I'm going to be using one of these old camcorders that I have. Uh, basically what we're going to be doing is that in a previous episode a while ago, I made an oscilloscope out of a CRT TV. These things have miniature CRT TVs inside of them. And so we're going to be turning that miniature CRT TV, which is inside this viewfinder right here, into an oscilloscope. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see what we can do with it. So now with all the screws removed, we can just go ahead and pry this open. Wow, it is quite the circuit board. Okay, so now with the camera all opened up, you can see the small CRT tube here that it projects the image onto. Now we don't need the microphone or light bulb, so I'm going to gut that out in a second. But let's go ahead and turn it on to make sure that it still works and that we didn't mess anything up. Yeah, and there we go. Next we need to find which connection point is for the power rail and which is for the ground rail to power up this CRT tube. First, to figure out the ground rail, I'm going to hold one of the pins to a metal casing like this. That's because likely this metal casing will be connected to ground, as they often are to prevent static discharges from ruining the circuit. Anyways, now we can take the other one and touch it to each of these pins. Oh. Ah, uh, so that actually wasn't the pin just barely, that was just that little soldering dot right there. But now if we go through each pin, one of them should have continuity and make a sound. And it looks like it's pin 2 for us right there. So we know for sure that that one's going to be our ground rail for powering up the CRT practically. So next we need to find out which one of these pins we're supposed to put our supply voltage to. Now I'm going to take a wild guess and say that it's pin number 6 and that's because the positive end of this smoothing capacitor, or at least what I think is a smoothing capacitor, is going over to pin 6. And the negative end is also going over to the ground rail, so I'm pretty sure it's a smoothing capacitor. If the power rail is on pin 6, it's most definitely one of those. Uh, yeah. Another way that you can figure it out is that if you have it still connected up to the camera, which if I did, I would test this, I could take my multimeter and put one of them on the ground and then put the other one and see which one has the highest voltage. Probably that's going to be it. Um, mine I think runs at probably around 5 volts, and so if it's somewhere around there, it's probably going to be between 5 and 12 volts. That's the, that's the um, supply voltage for this CRT tube. Uh, yeah, nothing higher, I wouldn't think so anyways, and probably going to be around 5 volts. So just test which one is going to be the 5 volts if you have it connected up that way, and that'll be your positive power supply, while the negative is going to be just connected to the ground. Now to test my predictions, I'm going to go ahead and connect up my power supply. So the negative goes to pin 2, and the positive is going to go to pin 6, which is right here. There we go, perfect. So, now I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power supply, and I'll start with it low, just in case if we got it wrong. Because if we have it wrong and we start with it high, then it could easily fry some component on this board that I didn't mean to fry. So start with your power supply turned all the way down, and we're going to slowly turn it up and see if this turns on. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So the reason why it's a little bit finicky is just because my wiring to the uh, pins isn't really that solid. But as you can see, the screen is definitely on, which is what we want. So yeah, cool. Now as you can see here, there's a set of four wires that goes over to some coils on the side of the tube. That's going to be our vertical coil and our horizontal deflection coil. So basically what we're going to want to do is disconnect one of those and then we're going to be using the other one to modulate out the wave. Now if I remember correctly from when I was doing it with the TV like a year ago, it was the horizontal coil that gave the best results. 
So we're going to try and figure out which one of these is the horizontal coil. And so I'm just going to pull all of these out. So we're going to need to test one coil at a time. Now that's a little bit hard with this because it has this four pin setup all connected to one connector. However, this light bulb has a two connector point. So let me go ahead and cut that. And then I'm going to use this to connect up one of the coils while leaving the other one disconnected. Okay, so now I only have one of the coils connected up and watch as I turn it on. As you can see, we get a flat line. This tells us that the coil that we disconnected was in fact our vertical coil. And so basically, since the vertical coil is removed, all we see is the horizontal position. Okay, so now with this, the horizontal coil is connected up to the board as normal, then the vertical coil I connected up to my function generator. And as you can see right here, which is around 60 Hz, it just bobs up and down, and the faster I turn it, we get a thicker line basically. Well, not really thicker, I guess. The thickness is depending on the voltage going in, but the line just becomes more prominent since it's going up and down faster. Like here, it's going up and down at around 100 times a second. And so yeah, and sorry, that bobbing before was actually 6 times a second, so 6 hertz, not uh, 60 hertz. Now obviously that wasn't really showing us the wave pattern, more than just moving the line up and down to that frequency. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the other coil and see if we get a better waveform. Okay, I do have the coil flipped around now, and so let's go ahead and flip it on and see if we can see the waveform. Yeah, look at that! So I'm going to try turning up the frequency a bit. Uh, you can see in some points it stands a little bit better. Uh, now we're getting to a pretty high frequency. So you can see it does handle some waveforms better than the others. Also, I do have to have it flipped on its side like this in order to get the proper waveform, just because the other way, like we saw, wasn't really working all that well. But you probably could do some different circuitry. Like, for instance, if you probably left it back on the original setting for the horizontal coil, then flipped it over to the vertical coil, then connected it up and uh, altered the horizontal coil, then it would have the good refresh rate that you need to get sine waves like this, while also still being flipped the other way. Uh, I'm not really going to test that, but that should work, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, now that we know that this works, I'm going to use the original casing and I'm going to put it all back in. Then the wonderful part about this is that we should be able to power this off of one of those little 5 volt cell phone charger power supplies, uh, like the little portable ones. And so, because this just runs off of 5 volts by the way, and so we should be able to fit that within the casing as well and make a nice little pocket analog oscilloscope. Before I put it into its case, I just wanted to show you guys how it's powered by this USB portable charger. So when I hit the button, you can see that we get our function turning on and everything. Whoops. It also has a flashlight on it, I guess. But there it is, and it works pretty well, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the case, and I'll come back to you guys in a moment. And now I have it all inside the casing, and it looks pretty nice. Now, this is kind of loose right here, so I probably want to find a better way to tighten that up. But, yeah, and also this side kind of looks bare, so I'd probably want to cover that up eventually. But for now, I think it gets the job done. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys it with it on. So actually, I'm pretty surprised about how clean of a signal it gives off. So there's our sine wave, there's our square wave, there's a triangle wave, there's a sawtooth facing left, and there's a sawtooth facing right. Um, this actually, I don't know, it gives off a very clean signal, much more than what I was expecting, to be honest. So, yeah. So now you know how to make your very own pocket oscilloscope. Now really quickly, before you click away, today we actually have a giveaway. And that rhymed, so that's sublime. So the company Banggood contacted me to give away some of these pocket oscilloscopes to you guys. Now, admittedly, these are probably a little bit better than the one we built in this video. So let's take a look at some of its features. Now, I personally actually really like this oscilloscope, and I'm not just saying that because they gave it to me for free, but I am saying that because I think it's actually pretty cool. Now, another cool function this thing has is that if I hold down this button, it'll tell me all the measurements for me. Uh, so, for instance, here it shows 900 hertz, and that's exactly what my frequency generator shows. And you can see the cycle, you can see the uh, duty cycle, you can see the maximum voltage, the minimum voltage, and pretty much everything. It's really nice. Now another nice thing from when I was reviewing this is that an oscilloscope like this, or at least the modern day equivalent of this, costs like $400, I think is the cheapest one I've seen someplace. Um, but for instance, this oscilloscope here costs like $20. Now obviously this one isn't going to be as good as the other ones that are like that size and cost a lot and are actually probably thinner actually because they use solid state now instead of CRT tubes. But anyways, uh, this will get the job done. If you're just getting into electronics, I think it's a nice little instrument to have. So yeah, if you want to be in the running to get one of the ones that they're giving away to you guys, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. I would assume that's how they'd want me to do it. They haven't told me exactly how to do it, but that's what I assume. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the thumbs up button as it really helps the channel. And if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, go ahead and leave it also in the comment section below. In fact, you could use it as the same comment from before. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a suggestion, but yeah, just whatever. 
Uh, the project that we did make today does include some high voltage to run the CRT tube, so be kind of careful around that as it could probably hold a charge, but nothing I would assume that would be lethal. It may hurt a little bit, but yeah, just be careful around that. Special thanks to the Patreons who made this video possible, whose names are listed right here. Thank you guys so much. Now, sorry that this video didn't really have any uh, scientific objectives in it. I mean, it was a cool analog scope, but nothing really too scientific. It was actually supposed to be a Tesla coil gun, but I kind of got the wire all tangled up. So that'll have to be another week, probably next week or the week after that. One of those two, probably. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. So please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to be making a miniature ion propulsion device.